Hey guys, so here we have question number 17 from build up your understanding exercise of the chapter electrostatics from pathfinder. So uh, first let's look at the question. Find electric field everywhere on a plane containing the borders of two parallel half planes extending in opposite directions. Distance between the half planes is B and they have uniform surface charge density sigma each. Angle between the plane and the half planes is theta. So if you want to give this question a try yourself, uh, you can do it now. So yeah, so if you want the hint, here it is. Uh, try considering for different reasons separately and uh, it's a bit hard so uh, give this question a time because it will take uh, some time to visualize the question. So yeah, so if you want to try it again with the hint, uh, you should do it now. So yeah, now let's look at the solution. So first of all, let's see what the solution is exactly. So here you can see that this is one of the planes and this is the other plane and these two are extending till infinity as shown by the green arrows in all the directions and uh, uh, what else we can see is that these plane uh, the plane uh, involving their two borders these two are the borders which is uh, at an angle of theta with them and it will be arranged something like this and they have a distance of d between them right so this is what the situation is exactly and here, as I've said, the planes extend up to infinity, but for simplicity, it is shown as uh, as shown above. So now here, the region along the plane containing the borders of both the half planes can be majorly divided into two regions. The region of the plane uh, inside the two half planes and the second region will be the region of, uh, of the planes uh, outside the two half planes. And we'll find the electric field in these two regions separately. So now, first of all, let's consider case one and let's look at the side view. The side view is such that if we are looking from this side, how will it look? So that's the side view in this case. So the side view will something look something like this. This is one plane and this is the other plane. And these two are coming, coming out of the plane and going into the plane with respect to the paper we are looking in. So it is a bit hard to visualize, but uh, if you uh, think uh, slightly closely, you will uh, be able to visualize this simply. And uh, here this angle is theta and the distance between the two planes is d. So uh, in the case one, uh, now how I have uh, solved it. So here I have considered some point p inside the two planes as we have to fi find it at any general point. So here I have considered a point P uh, between the two planes, so uh, uh, which is at a distance x from any of the planes. Uh, you can have, you, you could have taken this from the lower plane also, so it doesn't matter. Now, uh, now let's consider the electric field at P due to a pair of infinitely long strips of charge present between the angles alpha and alpha plus d alpha with the horizontal. So what I've done here is that uh, I've take, uh, taken two strips, this one and this one on the two planes separately which uh, which uh, are enclosed in the angles alpha to alpha plus d alpha and uh, these two strips will be infinitely long and will be coming into coming out of the plane and going into the plane as i just explained earlier and uh, they can be considered as two uh, very thin strips as the angle d alpha is very small so uh, what we can see from here is that the electric field due to this one will be in this direction and that due to uh, this strip will be in this direction and so they are in exactly opposite directions. So now let's uh, look at the magnitudes of uh, the electric field due to these two strips. So uh, here uh, first of all let's look at the lens uh, to some extent. So here what we can say is that am equals to d minus x times cosec alpha times d alpha. We, uh, we get this from here says that uh, this is d minus x. So, and this angle is alpha. So from here, by, uh, this length will be a d minus x cosec, cosec alpha. And this length is very small as the angle is small. So this will be this length times d alpha, right? So from here, we get that am equals to d minus x cosec alpha d alpha. And ab, uh, similarly, in, when we look in this small triangle, we can see that AM, ab equals to am cosec alpha. So from here we get that AB is equals to D minus X cos X square alpha into D alpha. Uh, we uh, we were needed to find this because we need, needed to find the width of this strip so, uh, so that we can uh, in a way find its linear size density of this infinitely long strip. And similarly, 
that due to CD on similar calculations with X, we can find that CD equals to X times cos X square alpha times D alpha. So, so we have found the small width of each each strip. Sorry, this is strip, not string. So the equivalent linear charge density for each can be written as lambda AB of the uh, of the AB strip as sigma times d minus x times cos x square alpha d alpha which is just the uh, surface charge density multiplied by the width of the strip and this can be seen very easily and similarly uh, the uh, linear charge density of the cd strip will be sigma x cos x square alpha d alpha so the magnitude of each of the electric fields each of the electric strips will be proportional to these as uh, as it is a uh, infinitely long strip, it w the electric field due to it uh, will be proportional to lambda over distance. Just like we have uh, due to a, a straight wire of uh, having charge density lambda, the electric field at a distance r will be lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r. So similarly, we, uh, we can get this that E will be directly proportional to this. So substituting the value of for A, B and a C, D uh, separately, we get that and uh, lambda AB and uh, substituting the length PA and PC we get that EAB equals to sigma times d minus x cos x square alpha d alpha over d minus x times cos x alpha so from here d minus x will cancel out and cos x uh, 1 cos x alpha will cancel out and similarly <coughs> in the CD part the x will cancel out and one factor of cos x alpha will cancel out so from here what we can see that these two quantities are exactly the same these two quantities are exactly the same so from here uh, finally we got that the electric magnitude of electric field due to the two strips is exactly same and hence as their magnitudes are equal and directions opposite their sum will be zero and similarly there will be infinitely many such pairs which will cover both the half planes and shall give us the net electric field along this line to be zero between the two half plates so basically what i've said that is that uh, the sum of each such pair will be the zero so for example let's take uh, uh, this pair so uh, these two regions will cancel out each other and similarly we can cover the whole uh, both both the planes uh, uh, like this and they will exactly cancel out each other so on all the points on this line AP line here I have not shown that it will be zero it will have a magnet the electric field will have a magnitude of zero so now let's consider the second case when the point P is outside uh, the region enclosed by the two plates right so here similarly uh, the here also the proof is uh, exact very much same to the last case only there are slight slight changes in uh, some parts of it so here i assumed it to be at a distance x from one of the plates and it will be at a distance of d plus x from other plate and here again i have considered two strips uh, on each of the plane here i have considered a b uh, which is at a an uh, uh, contained between the angle alpha to alpha plus d alpha and uh, similarly i have considered a similar strip cd uh, an imaginary strip cd uh, although there won't be any charge on it but you will see how this will come into use as we go ahead so again let's consider point p on the plane at a distance x from any of the plane any of the plates now let's consider the electric field at p due to a pair of infinitely long strips of charge present between the angles alpha and d alpha with the horizontal that's exactly what i said so from here, uh, by, by exact same manipulations as first part, the length AM, this length, will be equals to D plus X times cosec alpha D alpha. And similarly, we get that AB equals to AM cosec alpha. So AB equals to D plus X times cosec square alpha times D alpha. And similarly, uh, just like, uh, just like uh, we did for AB, we can do for CD. And we can get that CD equals to X cosec square alpha times D alpha. So, and just as we did in pa part A, the uh, charge density, linear charge density will be sigma times the width. And here I have written equivalent, uh, equivalent charge density for lambda CD is equal to sigma uh, x times cos x square alpha d alpha. Here I have said equivalent only because there is no charge at CD or originally, but here I have considered uh, had there been a char the same charge strip at CD. So here what I have said that. Uh, there is no ch charge uh, strip at CD initially, but uh, let's say we had, uh, let's for the sake of the argument, we have had a charge, uh, a same charge C at uh, CD, uh, just like we did at AB. Then what would have happened? So I've cons I'm considering the AB charge, uh, char the charge at AB and the imaginary charge at CD. 
so th- again just as we did uh, the magnitude of electric field due to its each strip will be proportional to these as e, e directly proportional to lambda over distance and here eab equals to lambda eb by pa and this comes out to be this value and similarly cd comes out to be this value so from here what we get is uh modulus of electric field is equal to modulus of electric field due to cd uh that of ab equals to cd so what this result tells us that ha- uh had the strip been present at cd instead of ab the electric field due to the strip would have been same so what exactly this result implies is that had the strip uh been I- instead present here uh instead of being present here had it been compressed to this region it would have uh, produced the same electric field at point p and no change would have been seen so how can we use this result so this implies that uh, this is exactly what i have said and so from here all the length of the second half plate can be uh, mapped to the first half plate in the similar way so the whole of half plate will map to this region ju- uh, just just by the same logic so from here what we can say and uh, this will uh, this disk will co- uh, become such a disk uh, this can be compressed to this disk such that this completes the, uh, this whole disk and we get an infinite uh, plate uh, having a surface charge density of sigma hence uh, so here i have shown it like uh, this is the yellow region is shown by the uh, compressed plate and here i have ignored this part so uh, hence the net electric field is just like an infinite plane which is sigma by 2 epsilon not so basically this has just become an infinite plane and we know that due to an infinite plane the electric field will be sigma by 2 epsilon not on the both sides so that was the solution it is uh, slightly harder to visualize this directly but once you get the idea it's pretty simple to understand so hope you all like the video uh, please like share and subscribe thank you